This patient is placed in a prone position. The skin incision is outlined by the following bony landmarks. Posterior superior iliac spine, greater trochanter, and shaft of femur. The incision starts from the two-third of a line from P sias to the tip of the greater trochanter then angles and extends distally about 8 to 10 centimeters along the femoral shaft axis. Sharply incises the subcutaneous tissues in line with the skin incision. Dissect the subcutaneous tissues from the fascia. Continue the incision anteriorly over the greater trochanter. Curve it distally along the tip of the greater trochanter towards the lateral aspect of the femoral shaft. Identify the level of the greater trochanter before creating the facial incision by rotating the leg. Start the facial incision at the greater trochanter and extend distally using a mayo scissor. You will see the bursa underneath. Cut the fascia of the gluteus maximus using scissors. Creating a space between the gluteus maximus and trochanteric bursa using finger dissection. Split the gluteus maximus proximally using your fingers. The sharp retractor is avoided. Continue blunt dissection of the muscle proximally to the location of the first neurovascular bundle. This neurovascular bundle is cauterized and cut to avoid bleeding. Detaching the gluteus maximus insertion. Be careful of bleeding while cutting the deep part of the tendon. This allows less tension and easier mobilization of the gluteus maximus muscle. Cut the trochanteric bursa and blunt dissects using a finger. Carefully identify the trochanteric anastomosis, which is the landmark of the proximal end of the quadratus femoris muscle. In the hip internal rotation position, identify the tendon of the obturator internus and superior and inferior gemelli muscles. They are suture tagged and incised 1.5 cm lateral to their femoral insertions.
identify the piriformis tendon, suture tagged and incised 1.5 cm lateral to the insertion. Elevation of the gluteus minimus muscle using periosteal elevator. Place a Holman retractor under the gluteus minimus muscle. The posterior wall fragment is identified. You can see the exposed femoral head under the fracture. Expose the greater sciatic notch and insert a sciatic nerve retractor in the greater sciatic notch. Avoid excessive traction of this retractor. Insert a blunt tip curved Holman retractor in the lessor sciatic notch. Now the posterior column is fully visualized. The fracture side of the posterior wall is meticulously clean for anatomical fracture reduction. Subperiosteal releases the soft tissue at the edge of the posterior wall fragment to aid the reduction but keeps the capsular attachment to the posterior wall. Reduce the posterior wall using a ball spike pusher and temporarily fix it with 2K wire. A pre-contoured low-profile reconstruction pelvic plate is applied along the posterior wall. and sit a bending of the plate by a mallet to create more buttressing of the wall fragment. The cortical screws are inserted at the ischium. The lag screw through the plate is inserted. Then the proximal screws are inserted. Sequential tightening of the screws allows better buttressing of the plate.
The sciatic nerve runs underneath the obturator internus tendon and the superior and inferior gemelli muscles. You can see that the nerve is tied in the knee extension position and relaxed in the knee flexion position. The piriformis tendon and short external rotators are repaired. The gluteus maximus insertion is repaired. A radivac drain is inserted under the facial layer. The fascia is closed using a running suture. 